before but switch broke on it so they changed the switch design um, well let's get these environmental let's change well the, the second one's the really nice one yeah the first one i i got because i have another one well, see, this is cool i don't even have to take notes you can just <laughs> talk and <laughs> yeah this one has the top with the chart recorder and the over temp guard it's uh -huh. called tenny jr uh -huh. it's got built-in refrigeration uh -huh. And really wide range of temperatures, uh -huh. about one cubic foot, give or take, maybe 1.2 cubic foot interior. Uh -huh. Very popular unit. Now let's look at the temperature range on this. I wanted to kind of see if, any, if it says anywhere. I mean, can you find out because I'll, it's, it's very I'll, important. I'll pull the specs on. I have specs on just about everything here. Okay. And I have manuals on just about everything here too. Okay, good. So don't worry about us getting the information. I mean, I have it off the top of my head, but you can get it. Ugh, I don't need a picture of some of those stations up there. Yeah, this one's a little easier to get a picture of. Yeah. <laughs> that was a nice one. This really helps me get a better look at it, too. Sure. Well, it's got a hole in it. What's that? Well, the cutouts are for the uh, component trays. I see. Well, do they have any component trays, or is that just going to well, be Well, I think the standard ones fit in there. Really? Yeah. Hmm. I think the ones above do, because it looks like there's something that's oh, yeah. above. Yeah, I see. I'm sure those can be purchased, too. Oh, sure. Um, let's see, what else did I see around here? These are big ovens. Yeah, <laughs> yeah those are 10 zones. <laughs> and those, one's got nitrogen and the other one is here. Oh, there's your other uh, Eubank spoolers right over there. Right, yeah, now that one uh, that has an orange spool on it, that is for uh, large size wire and cable. I see. That's a 6280. I see. The one next to it is a 6215. I see. And that's more of the standard size, and that's the one that I recommend. Okay. And that one may or may not be complete, but like I said, between the two, we should be able to make a nice one. And yeah, this one is more complete because it has the dowel on it. Uh huh. Well, several that's here. a 6280, yeah. Or, or probably the dowel from one uh, will fit um, the, the other model. 139 minutes of battery life, that's good. What's that? Uh, that is a uh, thick film screen printer. No, I see. A small area uh, from a company called AMI, AMI Presco. You wouldn't happen to have any uh, uh, thick film laminators, would you? Mm. It would be something uh, more like used for circuit boards, but... Uh, not at the moment. Oh, yeah. Maybe kind of... That we set up a prototype circuit board, you know, by, oh. by one of those circuit board prototyping systems. Uh -huh. Electroplaters, about yeah. 20 grand. Oh. But uh, it'd be nice to put solder oh. mask oh. on it, but I need, a, I need a thick film laminator to do that so, I, right. you know, so I can get, uh, you know, use that uh, film solder mask instead of using uh, photo imageable or okay. silk screen. Mask. So, okay, so proto PC fab one. Yeah. Yeah, I know those kind of people. Yeah. Yeah, I do too. I mean, I was going to buy one from this guy out of, uh, I don't know, watch him call. I figured I'd use that stupid direct lease since they only want to deal with new equipment. Oh, really? They don't like used, huh? Yeah, they they're, don't. They're I mean, well, strange. Well, they'll, they'll do used two years, but, you know, yeah. like your stuff I finance for like four or five years, yeah. and they're like, we don't do that except for new stuff. Oh, boy. <laughs> so you got, you probably but, get past them that time, but after yeah. that, you go, oh, no, no. Exactly. Which is weird because, it, well, I mean, I guess... Everybody it, else does that. Well, the last... I mean, the, uh, whatever length of time you want for you. Yeah, I know it. I mean, it should because it holds its value well, especially right now. 
you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, because based on what, what your initial cost. What do you have this? Is this a freezer? Uh, what is the, that's more of a limited range. Oh, yeah? So, uh, yes, it's a hot and cold, but what? it's not going to be like minus 177 right. plus it's like, like some kind of burn-in chamber or something? Uh, like yeah, it's a burn-in chamber. Hmm. Well, what kind of juice that uses? Um, it's not extreme, from what I recall. Yeah. That probably goes for quite a bit. What yeah, would? we powered it up. Yeah, so that, that's a possibility. But, but like I well, said, this would be a possibility for down the line because, you know, we may want to do sample burn-ins used uh -huh. on our production line. Uh -huh. You know, that, the other chamber would be more for development, you know, R&D, right. but, you know, we may want something like that yeah, eventually. Yeah, that's so right, because that's like the real acid test, but this right. is more of a burn-in yeah. test. Yeah, that's more the R&D. This would be more yeah. a production thing. Right. Yeah, this one, new, was 30 grand, mm -hmm. and I'm asking five for it. Oh, really? Yep. Five? Yeah. Oh, that's excellent. Yep. I, I, the only reason I think it's here is it's kind of specialized, yeah. and the factory wanted it wanted to buy it from me at one uh -huh. time for almost that amount, and I thought, no, but, you know, yeah. it's, I that's mean, pretty cool. it's, it's a pretty nice looking unit. I didn't even realize this section over here had a light. <laughs> oh, but, yeah. yeah. I didn't yeah, see so that. It's, it's yeah. not made by the same people as another one. This is an ATI. Uh -huh. Well, you can tell the ATI is just aluminum extrusion in, in the construction, uh -huh. but a lot of the aspects are the same. Huh. That's pretty cool. Yeah. This is a, it's an ESD uh, surface, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, an ESD mat, and if it doesn't clean up, it's not that expensive to buy a new, yeah. new four-foot piece of ESD matting like that. Yeah, see, this, these tables are some of those things. See, what I like about this, it's got a bigger surface on it, you know, it can oh, double. Oh, big work, work area. You know what? Why don't we pull this out? Because uh, yeah. in the meanwhile, yeah, I get a picture of some of those conveyor systems. this you probably already have a yacht yeah really <laughs> Jeez, that's a monster so this this is the heller you said this was how much the heller I believe I quoted that oh, get you the exact amount 5k okay okay said that Vitronics the was Vitronics 8k, 8K. Okay. That's this a one, zone. 10K, right? All, all convection, right? Yeah, this one's a super bargain yeah. at 10K because December last year, one of my local customers bought one for 15000 Yeah. Pretty good, good deal. Yeah. And so that's your batch cleaner. Now, you don't have any inline cleaners in here, right? Um, I can get inline cleaners. But you just don't have any in here. Uh, that's right. Uh, not a problem. Just yeah. ask me what you want. That quad phase converter up there for. 5K, you said? Uh, that sounds about right. Let me see if I wrote it down. Nova Star is 6.5K. That's right. You got a good memory. So you got another automatic screen printer up there, I see. That Vitronics unit there. Yeah, I'll, put, I'll, I'll write the quad down. I need to write it down, but that sounds right. Well, that's a big chamber. Uh, that's that's a, uh, an oven. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Huh. Cool. But it could be... be good for drying silk screening. Well, oh, yeah, right. you can roll apart a small metro part in there because uh, all you need to do is create about a two-inch rise ramp. Uh -huh. And then it goes right in the chamber. So right. So you can have a little, little 18 by 24 by maybe 48-inch uh, cart. Uh-huh. Yeah. Huh. 
Now, is there some reason these things jam? Because uh, he had one of them that's kind of jammed. Uh, those, uh, I don't. I mean, is there something that we uh, need to kick loose in there or something? Because it kept. He said it kept blowing the breaker when he was trying to hmm. rotate the lazy susan on it. There must be something that's stuck in there. Now this is a S and D taping machine. Oh yeah. Yeah. Cool. So if you got some parts that... Was this for axials or radials or both? No, no, or? surface mount. Just oh, surface, surface mount. mount. But a full range of surface mount called a systemation. Uh-huh. Interesting. Yeah. Well, how the hell would you do that? Well... I mean, you get... Oh, I... I this is for... Uh, this to replace a sequencer, I would think. Well, I guess maybe if, if you have some real specialized part and you don't want to hand, hand place it, but your, your picket place machine will place it you can tape, you can feed it onto the tape, uh -huh. just like the manufacturer should have done for you in the first place. Yeah. And then you put it in your machine, and then you that's go to it. town. So, so you got to manually feed your components. That's on the right. Tape. It's it's not an well, automatic one. There are automatic ones. This one, huh. this one is 5K. Uh, new, it was 16,000, mm -hmm. and uh, we used to get eight grand for these. Hmm. Systemation MT30, I think it is. Yeah. That's, uh, I don't know if you have need for that. Uh, probably not. You know, yeah, not most yet. people don't. Another test chamber? Uh, those are, well, one is a uh, helium leak detector, uh -huh. and this other thing is a spray flexor that goes for, the, for that big electrovert okay. wave or that other big electrovert wave. Let's see. And then this is probably too big for you. This is a six zone. Yeah. About right. 14 feet long. Huh. And you're probably looking at about 100 amps. And yeah. Two sure amps or something like that. But That's got a lot of... Good value. Huh. As a matter of fact, uh, if you think you grow into it, uh, I've got this quote. This one quoted also uh -huh. for 10K, but it's not yeah. as popular brand as Keller. Yeah. Still a good brand, but a, a good bargain huh. if you want a lot of... Yeah, really. A lot of machine. Yeah, for big, six six zone, that's not bad. Yeah, big belt. I think it's a twenty, yeah, twenty inch belt. So, so you're just using standard. Uh, would that apply well for a wave soldering machine? That kind of ducting. Um, I don't see why not. Yeah, it's usually not going to be too hot, problems. I suppose. I'm sorry. I said it. Uh, the exhaust user wouldn't be yeah, too hot. Yeah, I mean your exhaust at five hundred degrees. Yeah. Well, that well that'd be an overkill because you know really you're mostly just bringing in air volume, you're not really cooling much off, are you? You know, it's really just to remove fumes. That's right. So, really, it shouldn't be that hot at all. Yeah. So. I don't know what the rating is on that. Yeah. But, you know, the, the, the surface mount, they're um, reflowing at lower temperatures in a wave, but not much. Mm-hmm. Yeah, our ceilings are a little lower than yours, I think, so. Uh -huh. Yeah, these are pretty high. These are 22 foot. Yeah. Guards are probably 18 or so. Uh -huh. That's a good height. Well, what's that thing up there? Is that another pick and place? A blue? Uh, that's an older pick and place, and the crazy thing is, uh, there was we were short on space, and I told Zach that I wanted him to part one out, and it turned out that it was almost as good a machine as the Quad 3C because it had bottom side vision. Hmm. So, oh. uh, somebody who gets the 3C, if if I uh, wanted to, I said, hey, look, you know, I've got a lot of of replacement parts, mm -hmm. um, and some are pretty expensive because the vision is very expensive. Yeah, but that's a entry level pick and place. Your machine will blow the doors off that. Mm -hmm. The only thing about uh, the quad, let's call it quad thirty four, that was predecessor to quad one hundred, is that if you get the the vision, then you can place twenty five mil pitch parts. That's about the only thing that that machine would have over yours, mm -hmm. and the fact that it, that it has a larger work area. Right. I think you can do about 20 by 20 board with that, but mm -hmm. uh, that's about it. Hmm. Okay. So it's a very slow machine Yeah. in comparison to yours. Oh, one thing I was talking about before, this is a, a very user-friendly mm -hmm. machine, and that one that you like back there, the Mamiya, uh, the mm -hmm. uh, it, this was made by the same company, Mamiya Denshi. This is called a Mancorp ECM. 93, mm -hmm. and it's just a bread and butter, real easy to 
to mm. use pick and place. Uh, it has a teach camera. And, uh, work uh, largest uh, board yeah. size will do is about 13 by 16. This I like. See this you can put through whole components in. I was kind of curious about these other machine, you know, the surface now. Uh, if it's risen off the, uh, fl uh, you yeah. know, off the uh, base, you yeah. know, if it doesn't have a metal base like that, yeah. that'd be perfect because, you know, those LEDs are... Yeah. Well, yeah, I have seen people do die placement with mm -hmm. this machine. The thing is that it's inexpensive enough that if you want to start customizing with it, mm -hmm. you're not paying a fortune for the basic machine. Yeah. And this one... How much is it? Um... I'm quoting 10K mm -hmm. for that, and that's with, I think I've got about 15 feeders. Mm -hmm. New, uh, one of my local customers bought one for $48,000. They mm -hmm. like this one much, they bought a second one. Mm -hmm. And then I have, I actually have two local customers that, that bought two of them through me brand new. Yeah. Huh. And the last one I had like this, so it went for 17000 huh. with, wow. with 28 feeders. Why is it so expensive? Is it because it's higher, finer pitch, or? Um, well, supposedly it will do 25 mil pitch the way it is. Mm -hmm. What we have to do is you get a squaring station. There's a 20 mil pitch squaring station. Mm -hmm. That's part of it. Uh, the other thing is that it's still a current model series. Mm -hmm. uh, they're, they're probably the easiest picket place there is to run. Really? Yours is relatively easy. This is even. Does that have vision in it? Uh, it has teach camera. I see. Um, uh, some of them have vision, but their vision's a little bit overrated. I see. Uh, actually, now they have a, a type that's, they have laser guide vision that's pretty good. Uh -huh. But the early vision, to me, looked kind of hokey. And they charged uh -huh. 20 grand for it, which isn't much for vision, but uh -huh. it, it wasn't really that great. Oh. Is that other screen printer? Right, that's the uh, HTI HP2. Hmm. Did you move this here? Oh uh, yeah, I moved. Okay. I, I moved this here. You had to get the ladder out. Yeah, as I say, I don't recall that being obstructed. Yeah. So this was um, 6,500 base, and then uh, what did you say? 11,000 11, with the vision. It's with the vision. All right. And that little one down there was 6,000. 6,000. Okay. I mean, that's negotiable. The thing is, that I've got a consignment, and mm -hmm. that's what the guy wants for it. All right. But you know. If it's something that's a reasonable offer, I'm sure we'll okay. talk about it. It keeps making that noise. Uh, oh, you know what it is? It's this uh, yeah. uh, pallet jack. I've got to lower this down. Oh, you want me to move this out of the way? Can you take a picture? Oh, no. I or you want to take a picture of this? Uh, oh, maybe. Actually. Yeah, because that, that might uh, feed those, those uh, mm. parts of yours. Here, I can get this out of the way. Oh, by the way, this is the axial version oh, really? of your CI750. Really? Yeah. I've got a local company that wants to get two of them. Mm -hmm. They're going to put, I think it's bypass caps in, mm -hmm. in a product. And, uh, well, they never made a radial. No, no. Maybe it was just too complicated to do. Oh, I can't remember. Oh, you're uh, Yeah. <laughs> oh, here's something else This is part of what they call a ski slope feeder. Oh, yeah? 
then oh, it's probably more there. for flat parts. Yeah, I'm sure it is. But you know, yeah, it's just yeah. the feeding, feeding those weird parts. Uh -huh. There's probably been somebody that's done something like that before. Yeah. I don't know why they make these little things. That's some kind of a solution. It's just ignorant. this some sort of solderability tester or something? Uh, which is that? No, no, that is a, a through hole rework and um, soldering system. I see. It's got a little uh, that solder one I showed you before here. that was for surface mount. Mm -hmm. I mean, if believe it or not, this was forty-eight thousand eight hundred dollars new. Yeah. And I only want a small fraction of that. Uh, it is a computerized, conveyorized, desoldering system. So let's say you had 5,000 boards right. and one part that your vendor gave you was defective and you have to desolder it and you only want to take that out and then you get 5,000 good ones, put them in. Yeah. Then you get a program, put the boards on there, set it up, pulls it out, put the new one in mm -hmm. and it, it makes it kind of a no-brainer once it pro it's programmed. Mm -hmm. Whereas it's a little bit unwieldy to do it, uh, you know, up with other methods because this one clamps the board and it's very precise. And you know, this is the top of the line of, of desoldering equipment. Airvac is you know, the king of desoldering, hmm. but uh, this is pretty elaborate because it's got solder pot that will solder fountain. Well, uh, yeah. the solder fountain will pump up to a 12-inch wave. Uh, this, believe it or not, it's not all there, but when it's fully uh, set up, it's a spray flexor, mm -hmm. which, you know, spray flexor alone are pretty pricey, mm -hmm. and it's got a top and bottom IR. So you've got mm -hmm. a computer, you have uh, uh, confe it's, it's, it's conveyorized, and, and you have, you know, advanced flexing, and, uh, you know, really, uh, well, then that was the top of the line soldering it top and bottom convection. Now the top one would be top and bottom IR. Hmm. And uh, it's just uh, automated through hole desoldering soldering system. Well, how much does something like that go for? Um, if we don't have to get the spray flexor going, I'd like 7,500 bucks. Mm -hmm. If we have to make the spray flexor work, work uh, I'd like 12K, mm -hmm. which is a fourth of what it was new. Yeah. Huh. I have to keep that in mind because that could come in handy at some Good. point. Carts. Interesting. But, you know, it's just like uh, usually those systems are used for secondary operations. Right. So if you have some hard to do thing, but you have to do it again and again, mm -hmm. and there aren't any other kinds of equipment to do it, and mm -hmm. that's the type of thing that. that I have one of these. Oh, the Hellers? Yeah, something very similar. Um, they were okay. Uh, not, uh, not my very favorite machine. Yeah. There's one on the other side of it that's an even better one. Mm -hmm. That's a set, uh, looking at the back side of the 715. The front one's an H116, mm -hmm. but they made a better product uh, with the 715, and then they sold their component forming line, and then they decided to just do reflow ovens because mm -hmm. they were just doing so well with it. Yeah. Uh, so I know the people that bought their product line and then it's since been bought by somebody else. Hmm. Um, let's see. Now we're kind of in the, uh, well actually there's some some generic things like there's uh, hexagon soldering irons and then, hmm. but this is sort of a, a parts um, yes. uh, area, miscellaneous area back here too, but hmm. some standard products. Hmm. Oh. That's but at least these carts that give you some idea of how much do you sell? Well, how much do you sell like these roll around carts here for? Well, yeah, that's a good thing I was going to mention to you. This is very, very useful. Uh, new, they were about a thousand bucks. Used, we get about three hundred dollars. Wow. These are ESD type tell. of uh, storage. I can tell. Well, storage and handling carts, but really it's just. Let's say you have assembly in one area, you have soldering in the other area, uh -huh. you have rework in another area, inspection in another area. Mm -hmm. This is a good way to handle the boards. Yeah. 
because they're narrow, but then they, you know, have adjustable shelves, right. and uh, they uh, they hold a lot of boards. Yes. But then this is more your typical metro car, mm -hmm. and then some of these funny looking green ones, those are probably more useful for us for moving machines around. Hmm. Now that is a, a unique kind of screen printer. That's a vertical, brand new vertical separation manual screen printer. Hmm. What happens is it's got a feature that you usually only see on very high end printers. Mm -hmm. the, uh, you know, six-figure automatic uh, printers, mm -hmm. uh, pass-through printers, where after the print's made, the uh, stencil moves straight up, mm -hmm. and then it goes back like a clamshell at an angle. Right. So the idea is there's less of a chance of smearing this nice print right. you did uh, versus if you come up at an angle with a clamshell. But, you know, uh, the conventional ones are so good, it's just that this might be slightly better. <laughs> Neato. Okay. Well, I think that probably covers our bases in here. Okay. <laughs>